of what happens when you get a demand letter in the mail for $20,000 for a pandemic loan you never took out. Well, that's what happened to a Denver man, and he has a warning that it could happen to you, too. He reached out to consumer investigator Jacqueline Allen, who was getting action from the bank and providing tips to protect yourselves. This is a uh, letter from Scratch Services LLC. Tim Hart gets a lot of junk mail. And it's a notice of default and demand for payment. Which is what he thought this demand letter was at first. For $20,873. And they were demanding payment by February 6th. He then thought maybe it's a fake, a phishing scam. Did you apply for this loan? No, I did not apply for this loan. Contact Denver 7 has learned this letter is the real deal. Simply put, someone stole his identity and took out a PPP loan in his name. But undoing that isn't simple. I'm logging my hours. So far, it's 18 hours. 18 hours? Of my time. Phone calls, emails, police reports, red tape. I was getting absolutely no communication from either Scratch, which is the loan servicer, um, as well as Cross River Bank. I am afraid of really a bad hit on my credit. First, contact number seven's digging into the larger issue at play. Every single government program is at risk of fraud. Colorado Attorney General Phil Weiser says his office is going after this type of fraud, setting up a False Claims Act program. This PPP fraud is only one version of what we know to be a rampant problem of identity theft hurting people. Contact Denver 7 also reached out to the loan servicer, Scratch, which told us a batch of these PPP loan demand letters recently went out. If you didn't take out a loan, there is a formal dispute process to correct a mistake that wasn't yours. In the bottom line, it's someone didn't qualify a, a potential borrower sufficiently and cut a check for $20,000 that they didn't deserve. On the bright side, after he froze his credit and we started making calls, Tim got a response from the bank. Do you get the sense you'll get a resolution soon? I get a sense that there are people paying attention to this now and that would lead to a resolution soon, yes. For Contact Inver 7, I'm Jacqueline Allen. Frustrating. Well, the Paytech Protection Program came to an end more than a year and a half ago, but still, Federal prosecutors are still handing out sentences for those accused of scamming the system. So going deeper for you tonight, just last week, a Highlands Ranch physician was convicted of misappropriating $250,000 in COVID relief funds. The Department of Justice says Dr. Francis Joseph put all the money he received in PPP loans toward personal expenses, travel, home improvement projects. And Dr. Joseph faces up to 20 years in prison. Now, state prosecutors also are going after those who misuse pandemic unemployment funds. Just today, the 55-year-old Don Jones pleaded guilty to a string of felonies for fraudulently obtaining nearly $36,000 in pandemic unemployment benefits. Turns out she was in prison in 2020 during the time she claimed she was unemployed. And on this new charge, Jones has been sentenced to eight years in prison in order to pay back the $36,000 in unemployment money she received. Now, this recent case was found through the Colorado Unemployment Fraud Task Force. It was created in 2021 by our Attorney General, Phil Weiser. Last year alone, the task force handled 64 unemployment fraud cases, totaling $1.1 million. And today in our conversation with Attorney General Weiser, we talked about the task force and dug into how you can prevent yourself from becoming the victim of identity theft. First, everyone needs to do what you can to secure your identity. If you don't have a credit report monitoring system, checking what your credit score is, you may not know that someone took out a credit card in your name and is accumulating balances. You may not know that someone took out a loan in your name. So watch your credit. Second, whenever you get any sort of sign that your information, your identity is compromised, you need to go to our website, stopfraudcolorado.gov, and get our identity theft repair kit to take steps to protect your identity. Now, I went to that website and found that the state lays out three key things that you should do if your identity is stolen. First, you should contact your bank to close your existing accounts and change all of your passwords. And you should do this for every account that is linked to your name. Secondly, contact all three major credit reporting bureaus through Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, you can place a fraud alert on your file. And that way those companies will contact you if any new credit is taken out in your name. And lastly, make sure you also contact places like your phone company, the post office, the Social Security Administration. There is also a form to fill out online to notify the Federal Trade Commission. You can find a link to all of that information in Jacqueline Allen's story on denver7.com.